Rift Dimension is definitely one of the coolest places in Skyblock. It takes everything you know about the game and turns it on its head. It's weird, wacky, wonderful, all at once. To be able to brave the Rift, you might need a guide. It can be very confusing at times, and I definitely would have liked a guide the first time I went. I'll go through all the regions, all the items of note, and the steps needed to progress. I also made chapters so you can easily find exactly what you need. So please make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Enough shatter, let's get into this. Firstly, to get to the rift is pretty simple. You just go to the hub, oh yeah, you also have to be skyblock level 12 at least. No noobs allowed. Just go play the game, you'll get to level 12 in no time and then you can come back here. Then you go towards the Colosseum, you turn right on your way to the wilds and then you go up to the big wizard tower. It's pretty f***ing difficult to miss. If you have an aspect of the end you can just teleport up there, but if you don't, you'll just have to take the ladder climb of shame. And once you get up there, you talk to the wizard, he gives you some lore about the island and then he gives you an infusion so that you can enter the rift. You get one of these infusions for free every 4 hours. And all after that you need to pay with 32 grand XP bottles or bits. But why would anyone fucking pay with bits? It's not worth it at all! Just get an easy money method like just watch my money making video, make some money and buy yourself 32 grand XP bottles if you need to, alright? After you get the infusion you can just jump into the portal. As you've entered, you'll suddenly realize that all your stuff is gone. That's right, the rift doesn't allow you to use your cool items. No Hyperion, no Necron armor, and no preparation. Sucks to suck, sucker. You need to earn all your stuff again, time to actually play the game. And yeah, while you're in the wizard tower, your rift time does not start ticking. So spend some time ticking in your surroundings, talking to the NPCs, what, whatever you want. And when you're ready, take a leap of faith. Once you've landed, you'll be in the wild woods, the first area of the rift. It is crucial to make the most of your time here, so let's focus on the key things you need to do. First off, gather moats. Moats are these purple particles swirly thingies. They give you 25 moats each, or plus 10 if you're right by the wizard tower in a place called Enigma's Crib. And speaking of Enigma, he's this teleporting person you'll want to talk to. He'll hook you up with the Enigma Cloak, which becomes more powerful as you collect Enigma Souls. These souls are hidden around the map, like Fairy Souls. Collect 4 souls and you can upgrade the cloak for the first time. Each soul also provides a bonus to Rift Time. Trust me, getting these souls is crucial. There are 42 of them. And I'll leave a link to the Skybook wiki so you can easily find out where to find them. Just spend some time, whenever, trying to get them. To upgrade the Enigma Soul, you also use moats, and you should aim to get a few hundred of these at the beginning, it's pretty important. A good early game method of getting moats is killing the Shies. Just hit them, but be careful, at around 30% HP left, and the Shy will say something like, DON'T LOOK AT ME! And once they do that, you must turn away, immediately. Seriously, don't even glance at them. Ignoring this could cut your rift time in half, at least in the beginning, costing you a whole minute. And once you hear another sound cue, you, you're free to turn around and finish them off. Every shy drops a shy crux. You can use these to craft a crux talisman with neat stats, plus you'll need them later on for time charms. So save at least 20. Just trust me on that one. Now, let's unlock the rift transfer. Head to these coordinates and talk to Inverted Sirius, then go to the tavern and talk with the Skeleton Barkeep. Click the Stability Elixir that will pop up and he'll say it's gone, but for 20 modes he'll give you more info. This info will point you to another NPC in the tavern. Keep doing this until someone tells you to visit the Alchemist. The Alchemist is up in the treetops and is called Orgophase Serial Baver. Just grab the elixir from them and then return to Sirius. Bam wham, you get a doubloon and access to the rift storage. It's located behind the house in the real world, and now it's time for the gear. Wild armor and wild swords are a must have for this area, and you'll need to get moats for them. Find the Orgofei who sells the armor at these coordinates along with their prices. Remember, you can upgrade these pieces, so they are important. The wild sword is a different story. You need to talk to the three different Orgofei three brothers. The last one you meet will sell you the wild sword for 333 modes and three shy cruxes. You'll also need two pieces of gear from the treetops. Talk to the bug hunter first and follow their quest. You'll need larva silk obtained by hooking larva with the larva hook and odonata bottles. You can catch these flies by putting down the silk on two different parts of the tree and it makes a line over that you can climb over, basically. Make sure to grab the harmonious surgery toolkit and the silk rider safety belt. Save 24 larva silk and 4 odonata bottles for later. To get the Montezuma pet, you will need to talk to Shakel up in the treetops. 
use the cat finder to locate the skeleton cat under the tree roots. Click it and return to Shaquel. And voila, you have got the pet. There are more fragments to collect and each one makes it more powerful. You can find the other soul pieces in different regions. There's a timestamp over here where you can see all the coordinates and yeah. The Black Lagoon is going to be the second area of the rift that the normal player enters. It costs 4 minutes of rift time to enter, so make sure you've done most of the stuff over in the wild woods before going here. There are a few things to do here. Take on the Dead Hogs, Lagoon Leeches and battle the Leech Supreme. You'll also craft your first time charm here. Let's start with the mobs. The Dead Hogs are probably gonna be the first ones you'll encounter. Unlike the Shies, they, these aren't passive. When you get close, they charge up an attack and launch spines at you after 3 seconds. Each spine that hits you removes 9 seconds from your rift time. But fear not, there are mushrooms around the lagoon that offer protection. They might not look like much, but just go near one and it will pop. It'll become big, a huge mushroom. Line of sight the dead hogs and attack when they're not charging up. You need to collect 54 spines to upgrade your wild armor and craft the supreme time charm. The lagoon leeches, they are not on land. You won't find them there my friend, they're lurking in the water. If you want to reach the hut across the lagoon, you'll need lil pads. You get these by killing the leeches and trust me, don't try to swim over. It's a quick way to meet your demise. Just dip your feet into the water and as soon as a leech spawns, jump back up. Just wait until it gets close to land and then it launches up in the air and lands. Then you can easily kill it. You'll need three and a half stacks of lil pads. One stack for crossing over to the lagoon hut and the rest for prop. But before you head to the hut, talk to Dr. Hibble at these coordinates. He'll give you a quest to speak with an NPC over at the hut. After this and you've gone to the hut, make sure to kill the eye in the basement. It grounds up upgrade to rift time and allows easy teleportation. For the locations of all the eyes, check out this timestamp. Speak to K on the bridge to obtain the scientific paper, which you'll need to hand over to the doctor. You can also start on the read quest, help him rebuild his boat by giving him 16 larva silk, that's the only part you can do for now, but it rewards you with 20 rift time, which is very nice for now. Return to the doctor, you can do this by talking to K, paying a few modes and getting yeeted back over. And after you've turned in the stuff, you're ready for leech supreme. Speak to the doctor once more and it will send you on down to face the leech. For tactics on the fight, you can go to this timestamp. Remember, you'll need to craft these items with the fragments. These are basically required. Keep all of the items for later and killing the leech rewards you with 8 fragments along with 3000 moats. After obtaining the supreme time charm, Elise will unlock the rift gallery for it. Place it down there and Elise will give you a necklace that gets more powerful the more time charms you put into it. It's both in the rift and in the real world so it's a win-win. The West Village doesn't really have a lot of things to offer in and of itself. In terms of mobs, there's only the Shadow here. It's similar to the Shy. Mostly passive unless you do vacuuming, but instead of turning away after a few hits, it starts digging and tunnels towards you. If it touches you, it shoots up, dealing significant damage to your reptile. It does this three times before revealing itself again, letting you kill it. To defeat it, you need to juke it and dodge like a madman. If you succeed, you get a Shadow Crux. Shadow Cruxes come in handy for upgrading gear, such as the Crux Talisman to a Crux Ring, better boots, gloves, chest plate, and enchanted book bundles. Make sure to save up plenty of them, like 82 to acquire the most important upgrades. The West Village also offers a variety of quests. Sorcerer Okron has the Warding Diamond... Bleh. The wording, yeah, the wording di diamond quest. Find various glyphs, return them to Okron, and then paint them to earn the wording trinket accessory. So he says some keywords like a hint to where they are, and these are the coordinates depending on that. So by the pond below, in the windmill, by the water tower, in the barn, next to a glutton, at the top of the infested house's chimney, in a lot of cake and in a server room. Unhinged Clune is in the server room and he provides the retro encapsulating visor request. Fix his cables by hacking terminals and turning the cables rainbow. Succeed and you'll obtain the defective monitor accessory. Gunter hosts the Rift Rift. Complete it within 60 seconds to earn a dark pebble and finish it in 35 seconds to obtain a Gunfacizer Lycan. It's helpful to have the aspect of the leech when doing this race since it can assist you with some of the more challenging jumps to save Time. Use the lichen to upgrade your boots. The chief organizes a hot dog contest with Joey McPizza. <laughs> what is that name? 
but deliver 50 hot dogs to him within 60 seconds and yeah you get an enigma so having a friend to help you with this can make it easier to feed him those 50 hot dogs in time there's also cat that you need to help with clearing an infestation of vermin in a house you get a vacuum and you basically just point it at any vermin while holding right click then you deposit them you unlock more and more stuff to buy from this like gloves pets and even an enigma so now let's talk about other areas in the west village the dread form and the mirror verse all right let's start with the dread form here's the deal you want to craft the chicken and egg time shop right this is the place where you do it now there are a few mobs hanging around there you got the vault who drops these cool vault cruxes which you can use to craft better gear along with upgrading the crux ring into an artifact they are like shadows and the shy but they do big thunderstorms after a few hits and these thunderstorms i'm not gonna sugarcoat it they do a lot of damage they have safe zones but my tip is just keep out of range like a, f a few 20 blocks away from them no mechanics to worry about there are also not chickens and chickens but you'll need a burberry blow gun to take them out and snags of metaphoric eggs collect 32 of these eggs and 16 volt cruxes to upgrade your wild leggings to chicken legs now to get the blow gun shania will give you a farming wand it's this cow and she also has a quest for you. She's looking for two Cadacious Stem Bunches, two Wilted Burberries Bunches, and two Agaricus Cap Bundles. Get her those items and she'll give you a proto chicken, a key ingredient for crafting the chicken and egg time shop. When it comes to crops, be careful with the Agaricus Caps. Look at them and wait for them to turn red, and then break them quickly with the wand. Don't even think about breaking them when they're brown, or else get knocked. For the Cadacious Stem, just right click those rose bushes from up to down with your wand. And as for the Wilted, bearberries break any of those dead bushes with purple particles around them it's really easy like way 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 too easy also get 64 of these to give to reed at the lagoon hut all right let's break down the mirror verse and the puzzles with it first things first in order to access this place you'll need to have the supreme time charm and at least three minutes and 30 seconds of rift time remaining Inside the mirror verse, your rift time freezes, so don't worry about that running out on you. Now, this will be a full guide, but I'll try to keep the details to an absolute minimum. So the first puzzle, the mirror shows four levers in different directions, and you need to flip yours to face upwards. Then in the second puzzle, you have to cross the floor without stepping into lava. The mirror reflects a path of iron blocks, and your job is to follow the path and avoid any fiery missteps. Stepping on lava sends you back to the beginning, so be very, 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 very careful. Finish this and you'll be able to go to the third puzzle, where you have to craft a tiny hammer. The mirror shows a crafting table and a recipe, along with a bunch of mobs scattered on the floor around you. You can't see them on your side, but they are there, so you'll need to kill the mobs based on their mirrored locations to gather the drops required for crafting. Baby zombies drop oak wooden planks, cave spiders drop string, and slimes drop slime balls. Combine the items together in the crafting table to make your tiny hammer. The fourth puzzle is parkour. If you don't like parkour, then it's too bad for you. Get good. El Bozo El Ratio. Your side is filled with wooden platforms hovering above lava. Some are real and some are fake. The mirror on the ceiling reflects only the safe ones that you need to jump on in order to get safely across the room. Stepping on the wrong platform makes it collapse, sending you tumbling down into the lava. Stay focused and make it to the end. There's also a hard mode if you're up for the challenge, and I mean a challenge that took me over 180 tries to do. A challenge that requires an insane person. You can activate the hard mode at the beginning of the puzzle. It removes the safety of being launched up in the air when touching lava, and adds the risk of platforms collapsing if you stay on them for too long. But if you complete the entire puzzle on hard mode, you'll earn a special reward. Test bucket, please ignore accessory. It gives you plus 0.5 true defense and is very neat and truly a skyblock reward. Doing something insane for minimal stats. Puzzle 5 consists of 4 different rooms, each with an iron door at the end. You can switch between sides of the room by clicking on the mirror. Just follow what I do in the clips here. And oh, the last room is optional. Click the button at the end of the room to skip it. Uh, but you'd also be a coward if you did that. If you complete it, you'll find a chest with a big brain talisman inside.
In Puzzle 6, you have to get ready for a dance. You'll need to move from block to block in a specific order displayed on screen. You also need to do commands earlier on, and if you manage to finish the entire dance, you'll be rewarded with the Tiny Dancer accessory. This is the most hellish of all of the puzzles. If you have any amount of lag, you will fail this. Where the others are cool, interesting or inventive and unique, this one is just hell. The worst. Don't do this puzzle. You just hope and pray that someone just finished it and there's like a hole in the ground that you can jump through so you can escape to the next puzzle. This time in puzzle 7, it's a vertical parkour course. The mirror shows a selection of oak wood planks that are safe to stand on, but they're invisible on your side. Don't worry though. Talk to Dr. Emmett and he has your back and can give you a laser pointer to highlight the invisible blocks. Aim the pointer at the, one of the wooden blocks in the mirror, right click and it'll shoot a green laser that shows you exactly where to step. There are checkpoints down at the bottom, so once you reach them, you, if you fall down you can just get up. But finishing the entire course without checkpoints will earn you a, another accessory called the miniaturized tubulator. And finally, puzzle 8 is not really a puzzle, it's more of a celebration. You'll see Dr. Emmett in a room and he'll congratulate you on completing the Mirrorverse and you can claim a cool reward of, of 60,000 motes and purchase the Mirrorverse time charm along with an iron chest plate and some other cool stuff. That's it, the Mirrorverse has a lot to offer so get ready for some mind bending challenges, hell on earth and sweet rewards if you actually suffer through it all and don't give up halfway through. The Village Plaza is a place on the rift that mainly connects various other locations with each other but it still has some unique content to explore. The main mob in this area is the Scribe. Dropping Scribe Cruxes when defeated, the Scribe has a special attack that creates a pattern of coal blocks on the floor. You need to look at the coal blocks and this will turn them into gold blocks. And after you've turned every single block into a gold block, then you'll be able to kill the Scribe. Keep 32 Scribe Cruxes on hand, 16 for upgrading the accessory and 16 for the time charm. You'll also encounter temporal pillars in the village plaza. And these are like big, big towers of endermen that you have to watch out for because they send you back to the wizard tower if you get too close. There's also the cowboy nick quest to obtain the powerful horse Suka, capable of destroying hay bales in the half-eaten cave and cracked walls in other locations in the rift. Inside the cave you'll find half-eaten carrots and an enigma soul. Collect 50 carrots with the help of this rabbit that he sends with you and bring them back to Nick to unlock a collection. You need to level up the collection to craft the orange chest plate, it's a direct upgrade to the iron chest plate. There's also other NPCs over in the village plus, like Detective Amog, Detective Amogus. He assigns you to a reverse murder case investigation. You visit different locations, you gather clues, and you speak with NPCs to solve it. As a reward, you get an accessory called the Ring of Broken Love. Seymour offers an upgrade to the Gunter sneakers for 49,999 modes. Seraphine can be found in the Barry Center. She directs players to the Alchemist to obtain an anti-morph potion. This requires a plumber's bucket, 64 Riftward roots, 8 larva silk, and 4 caduceus extract. After obtaining the potion, you exchange it with Seraphine for the UST transfigured face. Also, make sure you have the Agaricus cap helmet, which you get from the Agaricus cap collection. It's pretty important. The Barry Center also has a portal for Barry's HQ, where Barry is hiding from protesters, just like every politician. Talk to Barry to address complaints from the protesters in the Barry Center. Handling all 7 complaints rewards players with Barry's Mount Grey pen. Use this pen at the old election box over here to purchase the Scablock Citizen Charm. It also costs 16 Scribe Cruxes. The main problems you might need my help with solving is the mathematical one. It's about taxes. Love having to do taxes and math in Scablock, it's truly a top 10 moment. Just pick these answers though to solve the problems easily. The next area is the Living Cave, and in the Living Cave, you'll encounter living ores and auto nulls. Spawning in auto armors is a crucial way to upgrade your armor to survive the shilling living stillness area and craft the time shard. Auto nulls are the main inhabitants of this area. By defeating them, you'll get nullified metal. It's a valuable resource with a lot of uses, basically. And to start, you will want to upgrade your leech sword with 24 wilted berberries and 6 nullified metal to get the self recursive pickaxe. Also, you shouldn't miss the living ore spread through the cave. You should mine it quickly as each ore disappears within seconds. Your streak determines the amount of living metal you'll obtain, so be swift and decisive. Craft spawn eggs with this living metal to create and defeat auto armors. After you defeat them, the, the armor type that they are will spawn in atop. 
and you can right click it to upgrade your own armor by a certain percent. You need 100% on each armor piece to avoid the frostbite and the mobs are pretty straightforward but they get invincible at low health. You need to break the blocks that they spawn to smash their immunity and to finish them off. Explore further to discover living snakes. They're basically ore formations snaking along the cave walls. If you have a frozen water pun guy, you can calm them down. That allows you to mine living metal hearts from them. These hearts are essential for crafting the Bluetooth ring and boot upgrades. If you make enchanted books out of them, they're also worth a lot. In the living stillness, you'll find the frozen water, which if you mine, you can turn into the frozen water pun guy. You need 128 for this and 8 nullified metal. Be aware that the living snakes are a lot slower down here because because it's so cold and you also should make sure that you know how to deal with the frozen. They have unique mechanics and basically they shoot ice bolts and when near defeat they will encase themselves in ice and you need to break all these blocks within 10 seconds or else you lose 3 minutes of rip time. You need to utilize the cruxes to upgrade your accessories and craft a valuable living time charm using 20 cruxes and 160 living metal. Cruxes also play a role in creating polar void books which I told you about before and they're worth a lot. The next area is the Colosseum, which is basically an area to fight Bakte. The fight has different phases, which I will go over later at this timestamp. So the next area you need to go to is the Stilgor Chateau. It's basically the end game area, and to get there you need to do this big parkour and have a rift coat, which you can get from Reed over at the Laguna. You need to buy it as well because he's a fucking scammer. And the main purpose of this chateau is to, well, get a time charm, but also to do vampire slayers. Also, when it, well here, you need to keep an eye out for the blood effigies. These constructs hold a special power, so when you break them, all players in the chateau will receive a plus two boost to the rift damage. And guess what? There are six of these bad boys to find, granting a total of a whooping 12 rift damage. Just remember, you gotta break them from top to bottom. Now let's talk about the formidable foes you encounter in the Stilgore Chateau. First up, the Thralls and Fledglings. The Thralls will walk towards the player and they deal 7 rift damage and half a heart in damage per hit, while the fledging rushes towards you, dealing 9 rift damage and 1 heart of damage. Killing them will give you Hemo vibes, which can be used to craft the Blood Donor Talisman, along with Hemo Blast and even Vampire Minions of various levels. These are really good things to do. On top of that, they also give you Vampiric Melons, which you use for creating the Healing Melon, also unlocking the Vampire Slayer quests. And let's not forget about the Splatters. If a player manages to land 3 hits on a Splatter, the Splatter will temporarily afflict the player with Splattered Hearts. This reduces the player's maximum hearts by a whopping 8. Around you there will be 4 different hearts that you can pick up, and these will give you back all your health, so it'll be fine, don't worry. Slaying them will give you Splatter Cruxes, which are used for crafting the most powerful Crux Talisman, it's a Chronom... Chrononomicon. Maddox is also here, and he'll give you a Vampire Slayer quest that'll put your skills to the test. Get ready to face off against the formidable Riftstalker Bloodfiend and show them who's boss. So yeah, let's talk some more about the Vampire Slayer. It's basically the same as any other Slayer. You kill some mobs, you get some XP, and then the Slayer spawns in. You level up the Slayer level, you unlock cool loot. All of these unlocks though, in the Vampire Slayer, are fucking amazing. They're cool. Enchanted books, the stake stake, the pet upgrades, the accessories, you also get even more rift time the more levels you get. The boss unlocks several abilities depending on its tier. Let's take a closer look at each tier and the abilities that the Rift Soccer brings. So the tier 1 abilities are the first tier 1 ability is Coagulation. It deals scaling health damage to the player who spawned the boss every single second. The second ability is the Spectral Form. It means that the Rift Stalker transforms into a bat and teleports around. The third ability is the Stone Wraith. So the first one is Clotting, and basically it spawns three Clot Coils that strip a heart away from the player while alive. If you kill them, it turns them into cadavers. The second part of this ability is the Stone Wraith. The Rift Stalker flies up and aims at the player's location, and after a two second lock-in period, it explodes. The explosion destroys any cadavers close by for good. The fourth ability is, is Mania. So basically the boss becomes immune for 22 seconds and during this time a circle of blocks split into four rings appears. Once you get to tier 2 it gets even more abilities. The ability that it gets from this is called Twin Claws and basically every 7 seconds the boss launches two giant claws. When it gets to tier 3 it gets even worse. First it gets the ability called Killer Spring 
which means that the boss launches a spring. Players must compact it by clicking on it alternately with left and right clicks. If the spring is not fully compacted, everything explodes and the player dies. The second tier 3 ability is Impel. So basically the boss gives an order, like hit punch up, punch down, sneak, blah blah blah. And the player must do this within 2.5 seconds, or if you don't, you take heart damage. The boss doesn't have any tier 4 abilities, but once you get to tier 5, it gets the Blood Ike, which must be destroyed within 25 seconds by having the boss launch Twin Claws at it. Basically, that's a lot to learn. If you do it, you can get some really good items. Now it's the part of the video where I tell you about the other bosses. So let's start with the Leech Supreme. So for the tactics for the Leech Supreme, it has four different attacks that it does while it reaches certain health. So the first attack is called Slime Pound, it does this 7 times overall, you just jump over it and it'll be fine. The next one is at 480 health and during it it throws bombs. Basically you just need to dodge and weave and survive uh, and stay out of the explosions. The third one is at 320 health and the leech spawns in tons of other leeches, you basically just need to kill them. Its final attack is a laser attack that it does at 160 health. It moves across the arena, it's basically like a limbo thing. What you need to do is that first you need to jump over it and then you need to dodge under it. My big recommendation is that you have an aspect of the leech and that you teleport up on one of the ledges where you can just bypass this entirely. It's very, very, very cool. When it comes to the tactics of the Bacte fight, it's a lot more convoluted. Bacte is invulnerable for most of the fights, but there are some phases to toggle that specific health. Bacte roots tentacles into the ground during the phase, which can only be damaged by globals. Tentacles spawn blobber cysts as well. After destroying all the tentacles on blobber cysts, Bacte becomes vulnerable until the next phase or until you defeat him. Bacte uses different attacks throughout the fight, so the different ones, the first one is a spike attack, where basically spikes come up from the floor, you just need to dodge them so you don't die. The second attack, so Bacte he forms a little border that is safe, and being outside of the safe area, yeah, it removes rift time. The third attack is called slime copter, and it's basically just a spinning line of slime around Bacte. It goes around the arena, it changes direction, that's basically it. And he uses more and more of these as the fight goes on. In the fifth and final phase, he turns the arena into slime blocks, which means that you'll bounce around everywhere and you have to use your blaster, a left click blaster, to damage the tentacles. He makes use of every attack here and he spawns in six tentacles. There's also the command, you know, slash kill Bakte. It's a reference to slash kill Dante that was used during the revolution. So just give it a try if you want, it still works, it's pretty epic. Portal, which can be found at these coordinates, lets you teleport between his watcher eyes if you can calm them down, which means beat them up. If you want to have an easy way finding all the Montezuma souls, look no further. So that are all the Montezuma souls, and if you collect them, you will have a lot of rift time and you will have a better pet. So make sure to put some time into doing this as well. Alright, this has been the full guide to the rift dimension. I hope you've learned something, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe. And I hope to see you here next time. Take care, bye!